Uh, we are now with the final uh, panel on this uh, very fine conference. We had uh, two days of uh, very interesting discussions, and we are going to finish a bit no less prisons and technology. Uh, we have, uh, first of all, Sharon Neer, our uh, chairman of this session. Sharon, give us uh, you know, your uh, statement and uh, um, starting words, and then we'll introduce our guests. We got it. Good afternoon. A very, very uh, interesting subject. We are speaking about the future of prison. And I think that uh, when we are speaking about the future of prison, we have to, uh, to remember that the escape of the security prisoners from Gilboa prison just two months ago emphasized the need to apply digital transformation in the prison system. A technology-based imprisonment system will dramatically improve the imprisonment and rehabilitation processes for inmates. This move has the potential of improving operational effectiveness on the one hand, along with efficiency and cost reduction on the other hand. Its purpose uh, is to rely on digital monitoring and control systems for the prisoner moves, use of biometrics, facial recognitions, identifications of dogs and prisoners, distance learning, digital le learning, and more. There is no doubt that this is the second rate change based on long-term strategic thinking that presents an innovative managerial approach the holistic directions of actions that include, among other things, the unifications of imprisonment agency, justice, uh, justice agencies, and rehabilitation bodies under one umbrella. If uh, you know the first sign of it, it's uh, the Nevet Sedek project in the IDF that includes the unifications of imprisonment, police, and court bodies under one roof. The future is already here, and therefore a plan is needed to implement it in order to prevent the next uh, ex ex escape uh, incidents. So we can start. Okay, thank you. Uh, on my left here, uh, Colonel retired Dakar a lot. A few words about yourself and your background, especially uh, your background uh, within the system of correction here in Israel. Yeah, um, my background came from army. Most of the time, special forces, army, police, uh, the Yamam, Yamas, whatever. And then uh, they took me and suggested me to build a, a special unit in the prison service. Uh, we built a unit called Misada unit. It was the establishing the first command of the unit specialized in non-little, less little uh, uh, events. Uh, helped the army a lot uh, in the Iknatkut and uh, was there a lot. Then I was a, a maximum security prison command of Gilboa prison uh, 10 years ago. Uh, uh, so you, you basically had life imprisonment. I, I you were sen to. <laughs> sentenced to life. <laughs> no, no, no. It's a really good job and really interesting job. Uh, I was in the National uh, Army College for one year and then was the prison, maximum security prison commander of Hadarim prison. I think he knows the prison very well. And uh, unique about Hadarim, it's a commander of four prisons inside of uh, one uh, compound. Uh, then I retired. I'm uh, consulting and my, pr my company deal with uh, riot control and prison all over the world, United States, Germany, Singapore, South America and so. Thank you, Dakar. And on my right here, Michelle uh, from uh, Magal Security Systems. We know, uh, we know them. We spoke with them earlier today, and they have an uh, interesting booth right here. So, uh, Michelle, tell us a little bit about your background and what do you do. Okay, so uh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here, first of all. A great honor to sit by your side, if I may say. Uh, I'm Michelle. I've been in the HLS business only 21 years. Um, with uh, a lot of experience about homeland security projects, especially on critical facilities such as prisons, seaports, airports. So I'm quite a professional about this segment of my life. 
ex special forces. So uh, I'm kind of a combination hybrid engineer operational person, which is quite different than all the other engineers. Uh, but mainly, mainly, mainly saw a lot of correctional facilities all over the world in different continents with different attitudes towards uh, the view of correctional facilities. And that gave me also the insights to bring to this panel with a lot of joy to try and discuss this theme in a matter of uh, depth. Right. Well, this is a very complicated business, I must say. Uh, and uh, I want to start by, uh, by asking you, Dakar, uh, what are the main issues, uh, risks, that technology can um, try to solve in prisons? When you're talking about prison, you're talking about three aspects of life in prison. First of all, the security. Don't implicate the prison, the prison guard, or the prison facility by itself. We call it the how to handle security in prison. This is one major thing that most of the technology nowadays go to this uh, kind of uh, events. Uh, like you said about Gibraltar prison, you not, we want them not to escape. You don't want anyone to inflict the prison. We saw it in Mexico. We saw it lots of places that the cartel are, uh, went inside of the prison and uh, kidnapped uh, people from there. El Chapo, uh, for example. And you don't want to, uh, the prisoner to harm a prison guard or to harm the prison themselves. This is one aspect, very big aspect. The other one is the, the, the treatment process, the mental and the phys uh, physical uh, treatment to the prisoner. You want him to get best uh, medical treatment. You need all his background of uh, life. You need his medical uh, issues and his mental issues because you don't want him to kill himself like uh, Dudu Topaz events. You don't want him to be suicidal. You don't want all of that. The third aspect is how to uh, uh, ready him to, to life after prison. It's called the rehabilitation process. How to handle himself to events after we get prison. You want him to get a good job. You want him to get in society. You want to make him easier to life. For example, we had a project in Netherlands that they want to, pe people that didn't know how to handle Facebook, WhatsApp, uh, Twitter, whatever, and they build a special application that teach them how to use what, uh, Facebook without getting to the net itself. So you want to uh, process him to life. This is the three major aspect. And those aspects are technology, technology, technology all around them 24-7. For, for what of these things and issues you have solutions for? OK, so. First of all, um, I think that the major issue in, the, in correctional facilities or rehabilitation facilities, which are quite different in Europe or in the US, you might find them because uh, them they are different and in different locations and they are not physically in the prison. They are somewhere out of the prison. So I totally connect to what Dakar has mentioned right now. So the first priority is keeping the staff and the facility in the correct way, by schedule, by timing. This is not a, this is not a holiday inn, okay? It's a prison. We take someone's liberty from his because of the crimes he performed, but we need to keep him safe on the same side. So I totally connect with what the car mentioned, but the solutions are starting when you understand the issues when you understand the challenge. You need to understand the challenge, and the challenge is changing from continent to continent. The challenges you have in Israel is not the challenges that you might find in Europe, and or you might in Latin America, what we've discussed before. Not the other challenges, but the laws. The laws that allow you to do things in Israel are different from what you have in, in, in Europe. They are very strict rules. And what you can do in America, again, is different than what you can do in the States, and the States from Texas to New York is the, all the other, other different definitely, game world. Definitely, this, can, this gets into also privacy issues and what you can track. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about it later. Track. Are there any privacy issues in prisons? I don't know. Well, there, there is, are. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay, so we'll talk about that, but before, let's, the let's understand what, what is the technology. Yeah, what the are technology. You, you're talking about 24-7 well, uh, cameras, what, what is it? Yes, first of all, 
Definitely. All systems that are working in prisons are working 24-7 because their movement is endless. But the solutions that we have for prisons are mainly not on the specific sensor side. Meaning, if you will ask me a specific sensor, so I, I have the offering to solve your issue. What we focus on is the command and control platform, which is equipped with exactly the needs, the operational needs for the prison guards. It's easy to handle. It connects to all the subsystems, meaning you don't need to manage its system by its side. And I can tell you a story about it, a short one, that I visited a prison and I asked the operator on the main command and control, the one that controls all the prison, I just watched him for half an hour without saying anything. The, the guy needs to be an octopus with eight hands, three brains, in order just to keep correlation with what's happening now. So this is a weak point that I understood when, when we developed the command and control platform for prisons, that this is the critical point. We have the technology to merge, to connect, to interconnect the subsystems into one unified display. So I will be able to simplify, process, analyze, and give you a ready meal. Just like you go to a restaurant, you don't get all the ingredients, right? You get the final meal. So I'm the chef, and you get the dish. <laughs> yeah. Um, but tell me a little bit about what the, what the technology does. Uh, behavior, uh, movement, what? Okay, so first of all, you have, of course, you have layers of video analytics that detects uh, different, uh, different uh, behaviors and aggression, for example, weapons detection, fight detection, violence detection that are happening in real time, meaning... How early can you detect aggression? Almost, let's say, up to one second, the algorithm will understand that this is not normal and this is a fight. This is a brawl between two prisoners, or, God forbid, a prisoner attacking a prison guard. This is guard. without even a guard looking at it. This is without even a direct connection, without... This is, this is exactly what I'm talking about. You don't need to look at the camera in order to find the event. I'm giving you it ready, and I'm pushing, and I'm tapping your shoulder and saying, hey, pay attention, this is not normal. It's here. So all he needs to do is view the, if you view the playback or view the online stream that is popping up automatically from the system with all the description and data and all the workflow that he needs to process because at the end, you need to remember this is an emergency situation. We don't have a lot of time to play. It needs to be punctual. It needs to be fast, rapid, and if you need to call special forces, that's the time because you don't have to wait. This is human lives on both, on both sides, okay? Uh, and we have additional layers to this system. It's not only about the video, it's also about the access to the facility and the exit from the facility. We don't want people to have a long period of stay in the facility because a long stay becomes a breach. So we have to get them in, maximum secure, scan them, and unload them and bring them out. So this is the kind of automation that we are dealing with. We also have gate management. All the scanners are connected. So everything at the end, we are trying to make autonomously without a person actually addressing you to t and telling you to do something. It's all like a one-way road. You just get into the place, the systems, if something happens, if something is abnormal, even in the level of a scanner, of an image scanner, if we scan a baggage, or we scan a car, or we scan a truck. It can be also a food truck that brings supplies to the prison. We want that maximum secured without having three guards dealing with it because their work is hard enough and we want to save this with automation. So, and we have a lot of, of course, the perimeter intrusion detection systems that Magal has on fence, above, above ground, below ground, whatever I can say, we have all the solutions in hand, 
but mainly, mainly, our intention is to bring everything filtered, ready, centralized, in order to have a rapid response. Dakar, um, tell us the story you told me before. Uh, I want to but reconnect what yeah. he says and continue, but the main issue is not the technology. The main issue in prison is the prison guards, the, the human power. Why? Because mostly uh, people are coming to be prison guards not because they want to be pilot aviator and didn't succeed to be pilot aviator. And most of the places that are controlled are not controlled by cameras, not controlled by sensors. And the unique, the unique of the, the system is, uh, is uh, something that is very important. But the lack, and what's, uh, what we're missing is the lack of control of the uh, prison guards' uh, operation and missions in time and in quality. For example, and I want you to understand, uh, not this story, but another story. I was a prison commander. And uh, one of the time, I came in Saturday to inspection, and the prison, the working prisoner, are calling me and telling me, look, this guy is uh, problematic. He's going to the sick bay for three weeks, and no one is uh, treating him well. I saw, I called him, call him, and I see that he lost 30 kilos uh, in weight in three weeks. I took him immediately, took him to the, to the, to the hospital. They, uh, they discovered a tumor in his head the size of a, 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 of a fist. And why not? Not uh, uh, there was no detection that said, okay, he's losing rapidly his weight, and you should uh, check something happened. Today, if two uh, inmates that are with crawl, with bring them going to the court in the same name, no one detect them and said, stop, there's a problem. And we saw it, and the, uh, again and again and again, that the manpower, the the control of the manpower and the uh, uh, time and quality is important. For example, the shootout that was in uh, Rimonim prison. They, shoot, they do an uh, inspection and they saw that they did uh, 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 search every night like in, uh, in, the, in the logbook, like it's ordered to say. But they didn't find one counter brand for six months in a criminal prison. This is something that un unhearable. So what I'm saying, the, the, if I'm looking to the future of prison, because this kind of technology is high-end technology in the United States, in places that they really can afford and really uh, care about the, the, the prison life. But the routine, the ability to control the routine in prison, the ability to get uh, the uniqueness of what happened in uh, real time and event, because what happened now, most of the logbook of the uh, uh, in all over the world, every prisoner writes what he wants in, uh, in, the, in the menu logbook. The data that get from this uh, logbook is nowhere. It's only in the books. And the ability to control this kind of environment, this is the important. This is when, you, when I'm looking for the next level of uh, uh, operation, you have to understand in the long run, prison guards run the prison. And they need the ability to control what they're doing on time and get an alerts immediately and know how to do with it on real time. Because event, like you said, I have event like this, that uh, someone tried to cut uh, one of the prison guards in, in my jail, and it took between 30 seconds to one minute that uh, someone detect it and run and help it, and then we have event. Uh, Manually. Yeah? Manually, visually. Visually, of course. And this is important. But what we didn't know, and no one can uh, know that, that this guy, Esker, two hours ago and three hours ago and four hours ago to do something and she didn't want to, to do it. But no one can control this kind of events. And when I'm looking ahead, this is the future, how to uh, uh, go with the prison guards, the guys that don't know how to write and the guys that are coming, you know, because they force them to go to work and the guy that, uh, you know, when I was, uh, uh, I came from special forces, when I come to my prison, my uh, secretary called me and said, you, you, you know, because I'm ready to go, okay, after me, and we go to work. And she said, who's going to go after you? She is 18-year-old uh, soldier that here. She, he is a sheikh, Druzin sheikh, that's 60 years old, and they, they don't talk with each other because, you know, he's a girl, he's a sheikh, you know. He's a diabetic, 50 years old diabetic. Who is going to go after you? This is the manpower with the web. I love them. They're great people, the, the amount of love that we get from them is enormous and they're doing very difficult job, the difficult job there, there is in the country, in my point of view. 
but you ha we need to know how to run them better. And this is the, the problem in, my, in our days from my point of view. So, so I'll ask you, Michel, um, he said the prison guards are running the prison, right? Uh, all this technology, uh, how did they accept it? Well, that, that can, you know, also their privacy is a little bit, or their, uh, let's say, their leeway to run things around maybe is compromised here. First of all, it's a, it's a, it's a state of mind. You know, uh, if somebody would tell my 70-year-old dad that one day he will post on Facebook on, via his smartphone, he would probably laugh and say, there's no way he's going to learn this technology and look at him all day posting and commenting. And once you teach him and once you make him, you know, interested enough, it might adapt to technology. But I want to add a sentence to it. When it comes to our systems that needs to manage and, and focus. So it sounds very complicated. You probably in somewhere in your imagination, you are seeing a UI, a user interface, which is insane, full of tables, full of procedures, right? No, we made it simple. Push buttons, touch buttons. You just need to touch and it works. That's it. Single push. That's it. That's all you need to do. All the rest is automation. And I want to add to what the car mentioned. Our solutions are not only for the security to the prisoners or keeping the safe, keeping uh, the, the prison guards safe. Our technology is also connecting to the databases of the systems and we are fully integrated into the CRM or the ERP which are managing the human resources just like a company. When you profile a prisoner, I think the car knows better than me, that when you impound the prisoner, uh, he meets a guy that profiles him, asks him questions, intelligence officer. He profiles him if he belongs to a certain gang, if he belongs to a certain uh, tribe, if he belongs to a certain place, and so on and so forth, a profiling or getting to know you. So just like when you get a new employee to your company, you have a profile on him and you know exactly where, is the, where are the points. If he's aggressive, not aggressive, he's for murder, he's for uh, uh, money laundering, it's different. Those are, not the two, those are not the same typecasts. So once w this system is connected in certain levels, so they can all connect to the same server, I mean the prison, commander, the operation, the operation officer, the intelligence officer, up to the operator, simple operator in the ward, okay, can connect to the same server. Each one of them will see a different view. And each one of them will see exactly what he needs to see. So the word will see only the word, and the block will see the whole block. And the prison, uh, the officer, the um, uh, operation officer will see a bigger view and a bigger view and a bigger view. So probably when I'm connected to the CRM, a situation like the car mentioned that those two were led to court at the same day, okay, because I'm connected also to the database of the uh, ordering management system, I will pop up an alert just by being connected so the profiles cannot be at the same place. Just like I'm saying the two people cannot be in the same cell because it's a, it's a dungeon or it's a, it's a, a, a isolation block. Right. So two people is abnormal. Right. Um, the car, uh, what about the question of uh, breakout, uh, escape, right? Uh, Sharon mentioned what happened in Israel, of course. Uh, it was a huge thing uh, a couple of months ago. Um, this is very rare, but uh, it happens. Uh, and uh, the question is, uh, except for, you know, better guards and not having um, some flaws in building the prisons, what else can be done? You have to uh, look at it in two ways, because the, there's difference between the escapes of a criminal, regular criminal in Israel, and escape of terrorists in Israel. There are two different uh, types of escape, and we analyze, uh, and it's not where there's each year there's one or two escapes here and there, okay? And when the detainees was in the police, they have one or two escapes every two weeks. So it's not 
something that is rare in uh, it, the unique was the six guys terrorist in one cell. This is unique. This is a very uh, uh, not regular in Israel. But when we look at it and analyze it, we understand one thing. And, and I'm getting back to the to the manpower, the prison guards. When the prison guard is alert, he can he can prevent most of the escapes in real time. This is something that you have to understand. Most of the escape are blocked or happened because of the human power. The technology that add to it can add to other places, for example, for hospitals, for places that are remote from the prison, that their ability to control the movement in the prisoner is very important because most of the escape happen in movement. In movement, not from a special force, but from a regular prison guard in hospital in places like this. This is something that happened. And the technology is there, but it's not useful or not uh, operational in most of the countries. When you look in uh, 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 terrorists, most of their escape are planned. And the ability for them is to control inside of the environment. When we took, and we, I don't want to get in politics in here, but uh, when you look you, uh, in Israel, the ability to let them uh, be a collect collective and uh, be a part of autonomic is a problem in Israel, but this is uh, not a prison uh, uh, issue. This is a political issue, and you have to decide. And my point of view, I tell it lots of time, the uh, uh, government have to decide what they were done with, with the prisoner. But the regulation, if you elect all of the prison, if you take the regulation and use them, no prison will uh, happen. But the problem is, again, the human the manpower is a, a, a little bit sick, is a little bit tired. For example, in Gilboa prison, what you do as a... Or route, a little bit sleep. A little bit sleep. What you do in, in a prison, in the towers. I took a product called Small uh, Body. We took uh, Jack Russell's and uh, Fox Terrier the dogs, and the prison guard went upstairs to the tower with a small dog. And the, why it was important? First of all, after four hours, you will talk with the dog because it's uh, boring and you want to be uh, keep, uh, safe. But the dog can snip in this kind of uh, level for 70 meters, something that the human eye can't see, cannot see. And it was a good product, and uh, unfortunately, uh, in the end, they took uh, it's like the, the car's uh, uh, problematic, so uh, it's not uh, regular, and they uh, took it apart. But if you can put dogs, if you can put technology, what we put in Israel is technology between two dogs and color, uh, we call it a bark, uh, bark uh, uh, signification. You know how to identify what the barking mean and tell them uh, there is something unique that happens there. So to use the combination between dogs and uh, technology was very, very important. I know that uh, and, and to control uh, electric or everything that you can, but you have to think like an attacker not like a, a defender. If you look in cyber, this is technology event. Cyber, there's the defensive and the offensive. Usually in prison, you, seek, you think only as the offensive side, only as the defensive side. And if you have a, a ability to think like the uh, offensive, you'll be in a much better place. Michel, what do you uh, offer to prevent escapes? Well, I love Jack Russell's when they are hugged in bed with me. It's much better, I think. I rather use um, other solutions. Uh, it's quite complicated. This, this is, was a cheap, uh, this was a cheap, cheap, one, huh? cheap uh, yeah. but but very unique. Yeah, but I guess, uh, but I love them. They're so cute. But anyway, um, I I I think it's it's very complicated. This scenario, it's not a straightforward. Somebody blew up. Somebody didn't discover. I think it's quite a collective of things, a collective of actions that happened during, I mean, a long period of time, meaning somebody missed something in the procedure. Missed a lot of signs in the procedure. I'm, I'm just being, trying to be gentle, although I'm rather big, I'm trying to be as gentle <laughs> as possible. So I think that somebody missed something, okay? Let's not get into the details, but this is what, that's what happens when you miss a single procedure, when you skip a procedure, when you don't perform something, or worse than this, just saying, I did it and you didn't. So it prolongs over uh, a long period of time. Uh, this is exactly the, where technology is coming. Technology is never tired. 
computers never get tired. They get broken, but they never get tired. I mean, they enforce procedure. This is the, this is the magic of technology. When we teach her, just like, again, in the, in the system for prisons, uh, I just want to mention a small story. We, we performed um, a high-level security federal prison built from the ground, from zero, and it's completely autonomous. It's 90% autonomous. No, the prisoners don't even know the face of their uh, guard. Meaning the guard is sitting behind the black ward. He sees them, they don't see him. The whole prison is managed by our command and control. Doors are opening on different hours in order not to prevent, in order to prevent collisions or fights. They go to the yards in different hours they are they know who are the problematic and who are the right ones who to rehabilitate and who to lock down even more so and the most important part there is not what we can do with the system inside the prison and how we control the prison the prisoners with technology it's about having to make sure all the procedures will happen but the thing is about this project is that all the procedures are being enforced by technology, meaning there is a certain procedure in Israel when you need to go and tap. You need to go and tap on the walls, on the bars, just to make sure they are not, you know, there, there is no movement, no moving parts. Uh, I guess somebody didn't perceive, didn't go with the procedures so a long time. So it allows you to dig. By the way, it happens in Mexico the same way. When El Chapo escaped, same route. Nobody did the procedure. Nobody checked his cell. Everybody was on the outside. They prevent that El Chapo will not see their faces. So they said, yeah, we did it. Everything went cool. Everything's good. And he escaped through the drainage. So we enforce it with, first of all, our developed hardware. We have sensors that they can connect to under so that, the cells. That, that escape in Israel from a few months ago could be prevented. Totally. With the right, with the right, uh, totally. I say it when I... This escape, if you took the 2014 trying to escape in the same prison, the same system, in the same ability, the, uh, what they understand from it, if they did it in 2014, it wasn't escaped now. Mm -hmm. The issue is all the time the difference between uh, budget and how to run the budget and what to, you know, manage and what system uh, risk to choose. management. And what risk. system to choose, what for, solution to choose. For example, uh, uh, let, you, let me understand. In 2002, there was trying to escape from Shikma prison by uh, going uh, above the ropes and trying to. So they immediately said, okay, we need a video motion detection system on all the fences. So they built in Gilboa prison. Uh, video motion detection sensor, and when I get here in 2007, eight. hello, in 2008, I went to the prison. There was around 400 uh, misfire every day, because uh, uh, clouds were moving on the prison. They detect as a as a movement and automatically alert the system. And in the 4,000 alert that I had in one day, I shut down the system. So the ability is not just to implement the system. The ability is to look at the good system that can be, like uh, uh, Michelle said, simple to use, because it won't be simple, it simply won't use. And uh, you talk about the future, and one of the things that he said, it's also important, the future of prison now is less movement. And you, you have to understand, there is a jail, I don't know if you know, in Misepiko, a prison, it's a unique jail that they build it, less movement as possible. So the, uh, the judge is in the prison, and, uh, and uh, the, ev everything is inside of the of same, the same building, wing. Same, same facility. And when you get inside, you don't move until you get out. Same, same, same as the project we perform, the court is inside. You don't have movement of prisoners out. You go to court, you get, you get sentenced in the facility. You have a judge, you have, I mean, all the facilities, and... Once you get in, you don't get out. But, but uh, the important to do it is to understand one thing. This is uh, important to understand. 
you know, there's gang in prison. There's this gang and this gang and this gang. And I always told them that the best equip uh, gang, um, um, best manpower, best equip, best trained, known train is us, the prison guard. And if you understand that you are the uh, the best uh, gang in the in the in the cell block, then you control the cell block, and then you can do whatever you want. For example, we so, uh, consult in uh, Latin America, and they want me to um, to see what can be done inside uh, prison. And uh, in Argentina, prison of 600 people, there is around 14,000 people inside of the same uh, cell block. Prison guards are not getting inside of the prison. They are only in the outside. They are only getting the people that murdered in the, in the last day and took him outside. They don't allow themselves to get inside. So no technology can use there if you don't control the environment. So you have to control the environment. You have to decide what relevant technology you have in these kind of uh, places, sorry, and, uh, and only then you can move forward. What you talk about the CRM system, this is kind of system we tried to, to implement a few years ago, but no one really wanted because it's not high tech, it's low tech, it's dealing with manpower. This is a system, a heptagon system, we tried to implement it, and people didn't want because, wow, it just control the manpower, this is most it important. Has, it has a lot of fields to fill. Yeah. A lot of fields. No, but th this is the important thing, to use the manpower wisely, and then you can move forward. And then you look at it to uh, reduce movement, to uh, get people inside uh, and, uh, and uh, how to control them better, to give them rehabilitation process, and to control the environment. I just want to reconnect with two last sentences on what Dakar is mentioning, which is quite interesting. Um, it's a good panel. We always agree with each other. Yeah, <laughs> always, yeah. Well, I try not to not to uh, to be on the positive side, you know, with Jack Russell. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm big enough. Uh, so, I just want to reconnect on that um, issue that uh, at the end, prisons and the car will agree with me. It's how you educate your prisoners. It means how much. Uh, let's say, let's call it force presentation you have in front of them. Those are not peaceful persons, okay? Those are not peace protesters, protesters or Greenpeace activists. In some of the continents, they are very vicious and very cruel. And it's all a matter of the force that you are showing them. And it's like kind of like boot camp, like joining the army. They give you a two, the first two weeks is always a shock. You get used to commands, you get used to get up early, you get right. used to. So if you get a prisoner into a holiday inn when he can move and do whatever he wants and move between cells and do whatever he wants and even attack a police uh, um, a prison guard, sorry, and even if he can uh, argue with him in the level of argument, meaning have a discussion with him, not a straight order, but then you lose the you lose the ability to to frighten him and when you when this line is starting to be blur this is the way this is the place that you are losing control and it's only get more and more not solid for for example there's a, a law of a, a flag you have to get a flag in every public area in israel right so when the law is done I put, uh, took the flag in each uh, one of the cell block, even the terrorist cell block in Gilboa prison. And everyone look, you are very agitated. No, I'm, this is the law. I have to put Israeli flag in every public area, even if they're in their cell blocks. And if they don't like it, they can move if they really want to. <laughs> but this is my home. This is my house. I control the, pre I control the environment. And if you can explain to people that you control the environment, you control the environment, and then you can amplify everything you want. But we were talking, we were talking briefly about uh, rights and privacy rights of uh, prisoners. Yeah, the, the, you have to understand that even, uh, the, again, it's a, di a different area, different places. United States, after you sentence to law, you don't have no privacy, you don't have nothing to, to gain. You get all the equipment, you get the jumpsuit, no, uh, you have to understand why Rosenstein didn't and, want to stay and in the United States. And you're a number. States. And you start to be a number, which yeah, is quite you, interesting. You start you, to be a number. 
in the United States, you, you, uh, uh, until you sentence, you, you have all the privacy in the world. When you sentence, you're in the bottom list of the world. Rosen Chen, one of the biggest uh, crime family in Israel, didn't want to stay in the United States after his sentence because he understand what is going to be there. Europe, for example, you have rights. You can't touch them, you can't hurt them. We have an event in Germany, uh, they call me because they uh, have a rise in the amount of uh, uh, Arab uh, population inside of Germany. So they call me, I do a seminar in Nuremberg where getting set on the Second World War and an Israeli Jewish guy <laughs> teach German prison guard how to handle Arab in their country. It's Talking very, about irony. Yeah, <laughs> irony is uh, in the best. Even they thought it's an irony. But uh, 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 you have to understand that they have rights, and the terrorists, they are sitting in general population with a criminal, even though they understand it's problematic and you can't do, and you can't touch, and you can't do that and that and that. And again, it's different from place to place, and even there's a, a in, in, in uh, uh, Europe, understanding if they can, uh, uh, argument, if they can collect the data of the prisoner, after he moves, and like you said, the brain is the combination of all the brain. You can do an AI system when you have collection of intelligence. But when you get out of the prison and you have to delete this data on him, it's, you try to understand, you will get back in six months, no one knows what he is. It's starting from mm -hmm. fresh, mm -hmm. even though he's a mad terrorist that killed people, yes. whatever. Uh, I, yeah. Well, I have to agree with him again. <laughs> All right. You know, if you agree, I think it's a good time to thank I you both. I can argue. I can argue. <laughs> uh, it was fascinating. Thank you very much. Uh, we've learned a lot about this shadowy part of our lives. Thank you. Yeah, yeah.